Welcome to the third video in the series, An Introduction to Land Administration. I'm Tepo Fokani, a researcher with the Alliance for Rural Democracy. And in this video, we are discussing why land administration is important. Um, hi, I'm Dr. Rosalie Kingwell, a research associate with the University of the Western Cape's Institute for Poverty, Land and Agrarian Studies, um, better known as PLAS. We introduce three overarching themes of land administration to show why land administration is important. The three themes are like the main branches of a tree, with each branch generating numerous secondary branches. And I'm Dr. Simon Hull, a senior lecturer at the University of Cape Town's Division of Geomatics. Firstly, there are, three, there are increasing human densities, but land is finite. There's increasing competition for land because the available land for habitation and production is diminishing as a result of population growth, unsustainable land use, and the climate crisis. Secondly, with increasing competition for land and social inequalities, social tensions are heightened and must be managed to prevent open conflict or lasting damage. Thirdly, with increasing densities and competition, systems of law and authority become increasingly important. In South Africa, there are multiple systems of authority regarding land, and in many local contexts, contexts these are contested. Join us as we take a closer look at each of these three themes. Unlike other forms of property, land is finite. There is only so much land available in the world for habitation, agriculture, industry, and all the other activities associated with human existence. We share this land with animals and plants and a multitude of organisms on whose existence we depend and who depend on our good stewardship. One day, we might learn to live under the ocean or in space, but even then, we will need to make sure that we manage our limited re resources well. Until then, we can only really live on dry land. While the global population is increasing and the climate crisis deepens, the amount of habitable and productive land is decreasing and social inequalities are increasing. A large percentage of people globally and in South Africa are living in poverty. Hence, the relationships between people and between humans and the environment need to be moderated. In government speak, this is known as regulation. In the past, regulation was seen as rule bound, but there is a shift towards principles, norms, and standards to underlie the rules, which makes regulation more adaptable and flexible to take into account context. Examples of principles to guide norms and standards are efficient, coordinated administration, spatial and gender equity and justice, and sustainability to promote desirable and socially inclusive settlement patterns. So we have seen that land is finite, but with increasing numbers of people needing it, and it's threatened by the climate crisis. When there's less land available for use, competition for land increases. When there's competition, social tensions increase. These can magnify social differences between groups of people. For example, differences based on race, ethnicity, social and cultural norms, class, status, ancestral claims versus settlers' claims, capacity to invest in the land, and so on. However, when the competing parties have unequal power and resources, it's usually the more powerful or better resource that triumph. These tensions therefore require institutions to regulate land use and moderate or adjudicate claims. If we fail to reconcile competing interests, it inevitably leads to conflict. When people acquire land by buying and selling, we say that land markets determine who gets the land. Thus, one could say that since the advent of land markets, the market is the allocator of land. 
However, in that system, those with financial resources have more power than those without. So without state intervention in distributing land, it leads to exclusion of the poor. In any case, in many contexts in Africa where land is held under, under customary tenure, markets are not regarded as the deciding factor for allocating land. Here, local actors may be delegated by the state or appointed or elected by local communities with authority to allocate land. There is usually a process of negotiation in these situations and humans in negotiate have differences in power, authority and status. And hence the processes of allocating land may also be unfair. What this means is we need mechanisms to mediate the processes by which people acquire land and to protect people's land assets, regardless if one is rich or poor. But who decides? How do we ensure accountability? The poor and vulnerable are most at risk as they have least access to power to safeguard their access to land. That is why we need good land policies and laws to safeguard access to and control of land and the environment. But even if land administration policies and laws are good, they may not be effective. Even if they are carried out according to plan, merely having good land laws are not good enough to ensure social justice. Whose access and whose control are insured and how? That is precisely why we need to build processes of land administration to make sure that policies, strategies and mechanisms are carried out according to principles of just administration. Just administration is actually in the Bill of Rights. Fair and just land administration systems should ensure that all people's legitimate land rights are secured regardless of their wealth or poverty, and also take into account environmental, economic, and social sustainability of land use. That is why all the elements of land administration should comply with principles, norms, and standards, such as social gender and spatial equity. Pressures on land require institutions to manage competing rights and claims. With increased human densities and competition for land, institutions arise to regulate access and control of land and how resources are A, used, B, valued, C, safeguarded, D, distributed amongst claimants, and E, transmitted to the next generation. There will always be tensions in these processes. These tensions can be fraught and contested if land administration institutions are weak. If there are several competing sources of authority, the systems of administration themselves compete for power and authority. These contests can become intense and even violent, especially when scarce resources are at stake. The processes and tensions can be found at all levels of society. There may be in families and communities, or between and among individuals and groups. They may be between occupiers or owners, and private or state investors, or with professionals surveying the land and planning new developments thereon. They may occur at all levels of government. These layers of authority, as well as the policies and plans, will all need to be harmonized to meet challenges from different sectors of society. Land rights and authority are far from settled in countries that previously had colonial governments. There is usually more than one source of law itself, and there are usually multiple and contested systems of local authority. Where there is more than one system of law that is recognized and or practiced, that's what we would call legal pluralism. For example, in South Africa, we have common law, statutory law, and customary law. Customary law itself is contested. There are contemporary practices of custom that have evolved in step with the constitution, collectively known as living law or living customary law. Some would say that living law is co-created by the communities and the state. There are also older 
more recognized systems of customary law that were molded and entrenched by colonial governments to suit oppressive colonial systems of governance over indigenous people. These institutions have survived in the former homeland in South Africa and uphold pre-constitutional practices that are challenged for being undemocratic, authoritarian, and patriarchal. In such circumstances, systems of authority may be in a continual state of tension and contestation. So land administration is important because land is becoming an increasingly scarce resource as the population grows and the available land for settlement, agriculture, and other uses shrinks. This puts pressure on the remaining available land and managing this pressure, maximizing the land use potential and avoiding conflicts are tasks that require effective land administration. Absolutely. Join us for the next video where we explore definitions of land. What? Surely they can look up land in a dictionary. How hard can that be? Yes, they could, but they'd be missing out on the richness of the multiple dimensions of meaning that people attach to land. Join us for the next video to find out more. Thank you.